stories where history's darkest secrets come to life. Tonight, we venture into the heart of a chilling legend, one that has haunted scholars, priests, and kings for centuries. Imagine a single manuscript so immense, so mysterious that it defies the laws of time and human ability. A book said to have been written in one night by a solitary monk, who in his darkest hour made a pact with the devil himself. This is no ordinary book. It is the Codex Gigas, better known as the Devil's Bible. Within its pages lie not only ancient wisdom, but sinister forces that have cursed every hand that dared to possess it. From unexplained deaths to burning libraries, the Devil's Bible has left a trail of fear and destruction in its wake. Tonight, we delve deep into its terrifying creation Explore the dark secrets hidden within its ink and uncover the unholy bargain that doomed the soul of its author forever. In the early 13th century, the monastery stood like a fortress of stone carved into the rugged landscape of Bohemia. The walls, ancient and cold, were a prison to those who sought refuge within. The monks who called it home had long abandoned the outside world, their lives devoted to silence, prayer, and penance. They lived under the constant weight of divine judgment, but within those hallowed halls, something far darker lurked. One monk, whose name has been erased from history perhaps to protect future generations from the horrors he unleashed was different. He was not like the others. His soul was tainted, and in a moment of weakness, he committed an unforgivable sin. His punishment was to be swift and brutal death. But the monk, desperate to escape his fate, made a proposition that stunned the monastery. He offered to create a manuscript so vast, so beautiful, and so complete that it would immortalize the monastery forever. His offer was impossible for he promised to finish it in a single night. Yet, the abbot, driven by ambition or perhaps curiosity, agreed. The monk was sealed in his cell, alone with his thoughts and his quill, as the night grew darker. Outside, a storm began to rage, the wind howling through the cracks in the stone as if nature itself sensed the evil about to unfold. Inside, the monk trembled with fear, knowing that no mortal man could complete the task before him. With each passing hour, the shadows in the corners of his cell seemed to deepen, twisting into unnatural shapes. Time was slipping away, and as the first strokes of his quill barely scratched the parchment, he knew he had no hope of finishing. And so, in that moment of desperation, he did the unthinkable. His heart pounding, his breath shallow. He began to chant in a language long forgotten by men, an incantation known only to those who dealt in forbidden knowledge. He called upon the devil. The room grew unnaturally cold, the storm outside intensifying, lightning flashing in the distance. The air thickened with the scent of brimstone, and the candle on his desk flickered violently before snuffing out completely. The monk was plunged into darkness, but the shadows in the room seemed to come alive, swirling around him like a living entity. Then, he felt it a presence. Something was in the room with him, watching from the darkness its gaze heavy and malevolent. Slowly, a figure emerged from the shadows, towering over the monk. Its form was barely human, its eyes glowing faintly, like embers in a dying fire. The air crackled with tension as the creature stepped forward, its voice like a hiss of steam escaping from hell itself. The monk, frozen in terror, could only nod as the figure offered him to deal his soul in exchange for the completion of the manuscript. With a single, trembling breath, 
the monk agreed. Suddenly, the darkness seemed to swell, engulfing the room. The monk could feel his mind unraveling as the figure no longer just a shadow, but something far more terrible reached out with skeletal fingers and touched the quill. The parchment before him filled with ink, words spilling onto the page at an inhuman speed. The quill moved as if guided by an unseen force, the monk's hand barely able to keep up. Scripture, medical texts, ancient history, and dark incantations appeared before his eyes in perfect order, as if conjured from the depths of his mind. He watched in horror and fascination as page after page was filled, the book growing thicker by the minute. It was as though time itself had bent to the will of the devil. Hours passed in a blur, and when the first rays of dawn pierced through the narrow window, the Codex Gigas, the Devil's Bible, was complete. The monk, drenched in sweat, gazed upon the massive tome in awe and terror. It was a colossal manuscript, unlike anything the world had ever seen. Weighing over 75 kilograms, it measured nearly a meter in length and was bound in the skin of animals, their hides stretched and cured to form the pages. But as his eyes wandered through the final pages, a chill crept down his spine. There, amid the sacred texts and medical writings, was something that should not have been there. An entire page dedicated to an image of the devil. The creature's grotesque form filled the parchment, its hollow, soulless eyes staring back at him. Its body was twisted and hunched, its talons sharp, and its mouth curled into a sinister sneer. The monk recoiled in horror. He had not drawn this image. It was the devil's signature, his mark upon the manuscript a reminder of the pact they had made. The monk's hands trembled as he turned the page, the edges of the parchment burning his fingers with an unnatural heat. He knew now that he had damned himself for eternity. The book was cursed, and so was he. As the years passed, the Codex Gigas remained within the monastery, but its presence brought only suffering. The monks who dared to open its pages began to fall ill, their bodies wasting away as if drained of life. Strange sounds echoed through the stone halls at night whispers, footsteps, and laughter that had no source. Shadows flickered in the corners of rooms, and the temperature in the library where the codex was kept was always unnaturally cold, even during the hottest summers. It wasn't long before the other monks began to suspect the true nature of the book. They whispered that it was cursed, that the devil himself had touched its pages. But the abbot, blinded by pride, refused to believe them. Soon, word of the Devil's Bible spread beyond the monastery, reaching the ears of kings and emperors. They sought the book not for its religious texts, but for the forbidden knowledge it contained. It was said that whoever possessed the Codex Gigas would wield unimaginable power, for the book held secrets no man was meant to know. But those who sought the Codex quickly came to regret it. Wars broke out over the manuscript, and wherever it went, death and destruction followed. Entire armies were slaughtered, kingdoms fell into ruin, and the plague swept through the land like a shadow. In 1648, during the Thirty Years' War, the Codex Gigas was taken by Swedish forces as war loot and transported to Stockholm. The soldiers who carried the book reported strange occurrences during the journey. One man claimed that the devil himself walked alongside their cart, his eyes glowing red in the darkness. Another soldier was found dead, his face frozen in a mask of terror. 
as though he had seen something that had driven him mad. Once the Codex arrived in Sweden, it was placed in the Royal Library, but its presence there only brought more misfortune. Fires broke out in the library on several occasions, yet the Codex remained untouched by the flames. It was as though some dark force protected it, ensuring that it would survive for generations to come. Today, the Codex Gigas resides in the National Library of Sweden, where it is kept under lock and key. Scholars who study the manuscript report feeling an overwhelming sense of dread when they examine its pages. Some have claimed to hear faint whispers, voices calling out from the depths of the book, while others have felt a presence in the room, watching them from the shadows. The Devil's Bible continues to haunt those who come into contact with it, its mystery still unsolved. How could one monk, in a single night, create a manuscript so vast, so perfect, and so cursed? Was it truly the Devil's work, or was the monk driven mad by the impossible task he had set for himself? The answers may never be known, but one thing is certain, the Codex Gigas is no ordinary manuscript. It is a relic of darkness, a testament to the terrifying power of the devil, and a reminder that some knowledge is better left forgotten. The monk's soul may have been the first claim by the devil, but it will not be the last. The Codex waits, patient and eternal, for the next fool who dares to seek its secrets.